I want to start by wishing uh, all committee members and all the Senate members and the GLA staff uh, a happy new year. <clears throat> this budget is designed to improve the lives of all Londoners, no matter what their background or where they live in our city. It sets out the core priorities of my administration over the next financial year and how we intend to implement them, from investing in the genuinely affordable homes our city desperately needs, to tackling the scourges of knife crime and air pollution and making public transport more affordable. Everything in this budget is intended to enhance the quality of life in London. Cement our city's standing as a world leading hub of commerce and culture and give Londoners the modern infrastructure and vital helping hand they need to fulfil their potential. Following the Brexit vote, it also contains measures to support London's businesses, large and small, at this time of heightened uncertainty. And its overarching goal is to help build an economy that works for all our communities and every Londoner. The issue that stands out above all others in this budget is funding for the Metropolitan Police Service. Keeping Londoners safe is my top priority and the responsibility that I take incredibly seriously. Over the last year, we've had four terrorist attacks and an awful fire at Grenfell Tower. I know all of us more recently were deeply shocked by the four horrific deaths in our city on New Year's Eve and are united in sending the message that if you use a knife in London, the full force of the law will be brought down upon you. You will be caught and you will be prosecuted. Unfortunately, despite lobbying from myself, the government is still failing to provide the Met with the funding and resources they need to keep Londoners safe. As some of the members know, the government has forced the Met to make £600 million of cuts over recent years already. And the announcement on funding from the policing minister before Christmas was just smoke and mirrors. It doesn't fundamentally change anything given the government's refusal to fund police pay awards. Clearly, this government thinks policing should be done on the cheap. But as the rise in violent crime in countless towns and cities across our country shows, cutting police budgets, <coughs> particularly when there are other cuts across the public sector, has very real consequences. As Mayor, I will do everything in my power to protect London from rising crime and the serious terrorist threat we face. That's why I'm taking the action that, frankly, I do not want to take. Council tax is regressive, but there is a black hole in the police budget, so I'm asking Londoners to pay an average of 27 pence more a week through their council tax to contribute towards our city's safety. Of course, given that the government is responsible for over 70% of the Met's budget, this increase in council tax alone will not resolve the funding pressures. But the millions it promises to generate could reduce the impact and some of the very worst consequences of the government's cuts. Of course, there are many other elements to this budget that I look forward to discussing today. Additional funding for the London Fire Brigade to help them manage in the aftermath <coughs> of the horrific Grenfell Tower fire, £3.15 billion for building new genuinely affordable homes, a freeze on all TfL fares while protecting concessions and investments, record investment in tackling air pollution and modernising our transport infrastructure, and money to further improve London's world-class cultural offering. I look forward to discussing these with you and answering your questions, Chair.